Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well. If you're new to the channel and tuning in for the very first time then a very warm welcome to you. And as always, a warm welcome back to all of our subscribers and frequent flyers. We're continuing with our little three part series just showing you guys um, at least the basics of understanding the Aerosoft CRJ, the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, we've covered the first tutorial which was cold and dark to engine start. We've then covered taxi, takeoff, initial climb in the second episode and today we're looking at uh, our final sort of approach phase into Hamburg and uh, arriving with an ILS approach. Of course over time um, those of you who saw my live stream canary hopping um, a few weeks back we took the Aerosoft CRJ all around the Canaries we did VOR approaches, NDB approaches uh, visual approaches uh, and all sorts of cool stuff and uh, it worked exceptionally well so it is a great aeroplane in the sim. Um, make sure you click subscribe down below and uh, click the like button if you enjoy the video. I'm trying to sort of keep it as um, interesting as possible so I hope you guys enjoy it without going into too much detail of course because I'm still learning the aeroplane myself. So into the flight deck then and uh, we're heading in via Whiskey Sierra, Sierra November and we've actually configured for the Ribso 1 Papa arrival into Hamburg uh, and that's because we're expecting runway 23 today current METAR, winds are 220 at 8 knots visibility 8000 meters, broken cloud at 3400 plus 9 degrees celsius, dew point plus 5 degrees and the Q&H of 1022 so uh, we've selected runway two three for purposes of today um, and we've configured the star relevant to that so that's the ribso one papa let me show you guys that on navigraph here we go so whiskey sierra november there's a couple of other waypoints uh, but effectively then we're going to reach ribso and we have to be below at or below flight level 110 at ribso we then turn right with a speed constraint of 220 knots at delta hotel 620 and and we fly a heading of 094 degrees before doing a bit of an extended downwind leg and some vectoring turns etc to form the ILS approach from Delta Hotel 657. Moving on to the approach plates then. Following on from Delta Hotel 657 what we're then going to be doing is uh, flying straight in effectively uh, we'll still be about 15, oh, there we go, so we're still going to be 17, 18 miles away from the airport as you can see when we pass that waypoint and uh, the actual approach sector comes from PISAS and that's where the start of the glide slope is, we have to be as you can see at the bottom here on the plates, we have to be intercepting the glide slope around about 3000 feet at that point for a 3 degree glide slope down to the runway our minimums will go with uh, category 2 um, and we'll put rad out of 98 or a decision height of 143 so we'll use MDA we'll use 143 feet today and you can see the requirements of runway visual range of 300 meters with this approach um, but the weather certainly allows for it importantly then we need to have a look at the Ulster VOR 115 decimal 8 and we need to make sure we've got the ILS frequency of 111.5 tuned in as well for that ILS approach. Similarly, we need to make sure we've got the Hamburg VOR in there in case of a go around um, for our missed approach. And uh, that's pretty much everything we're going to need. We'll transition altitude to 5,000 feet on the charts at the top, but of course, if we're on VATSIM, the ATIS might be different. Uh, they might say 6,500 feet, for example. Uh, but we're just going to use the data purely as it is on the charts today. So let's go ahead and put all of that into the aeroplane. So we've gone ahead and added in on the arrivals page. We've entered into Hamburg. We've selected ILS 23 and it's given us the specific approaches, for, uh, stars for that. And uh, we've selected the Ribso 1 Papa. On the radio tab, we need to make sure then from what we've just discussed that we have the ILS frequency of 111.5 tuned in and we can select a nav 2 as well 113.1 for this which is the Hamburg VOR in case of a go around 
So there we go. What we can also do down into the centre console, we can make sure that that is correct and 111.5 is there. And we can click DME hold, so that locks that, uh, focuses it on there. Nav 2, 113.1, that's the Hamburg VOR, so we can also put that in. And if we want, we can also tune as a backup 115.8. Uh, and that is the Ulster VOR which is at the airport so if the ILS failed we would revert to a VOR approach during the uh, final approach phase of the flight but obviously it's Microsoft Flight Simulator it's not likely to happen so don't worry about that too much uh, and that's us pretty much done radio wise what we can also do is we can hit VNAV there and pretty much the aeroplane will start to allow itself to descend uh, and I'm just conscious I'm bringing the speed down to 220 um, or at least setting the target for that because of the waypoints coming up and I'm just going to let the aeroplane ever so slowly decelerate to that target there because after the ripso we've got that speed constraint we need to select our MDA so let's uh, flick that across and we push to set on the PFD at the top right you can see it's got MDA 0 we want to now make sure that we rotate the dial until it's 143 it doesn't have the 3 so we could go 150 it's better to go above than it is to go below um, the minimums in that instance as well what we could do is we could go de decision height and we could set 100 as an alternative without going into the details of which one's which there you go. This little dial here where it says nav source, that's going to be really important for us uh, in a short while because as we start to make our way into the approach phase of the flight, uh, we need to flick that across to track the localizer. So we'll put it on lock mode and we can set all our V speeds as well here. Remember, there's no auto throttle on the aeroplane, so we've got to do all of this ourselves. So we've got to manage the throttle and everything else. Okay, so one thing to consider as we get a little closer, we just recenter the heading bug there. Always get, need to keep monitoring that and doing that. Uh, our VREF is 128, so that's what we want to set. As we get a little closer, we'll do that nearer to the approach itself. And of course, uh, we add 5 knots for our approach speed. So we'll consider that as we make our way in. We had a message coming up a little earlier on saying lock will be tuned, which is great. And one thing to consider with the approach. We have a runway heading of 228 degrees. So we need to make sure that that 228 degrees is set correctly on the, uh, on the aeroplane as we start to make our way towards the ILS. So there's a slight discrepancy with the database itself here, so actually what we want to do is look at changing our altitude target and start to descend along the uh, actual star. We've changed direction, so we need to change the heading bug. And we're descending, so we need to reduce the throttle to slow the aircraft along with it. We can have VOR 1 and 2 as we get a little closer because that, that will become significant for us as we make our way uh, into the approach for go-arounds. And we'll descend at 1800 foot per minute. We centre the heading bug. Uh, 
and descending towards Hamburg. On our standby instruments we can see the ILS has been picked up there. So it's picking up the localizer, vertical and lateral guidance. And we're also getting the, the diamonds there as well for our glide slope indication. And we can see the blue line here, so it's picking up the ILS for us here. In addition to lock one, so that's all good. That's showing us that it's picked up all of the ILS. And uh, when we need to, we can switch to it using approach mode. So expecting a left turn. We have to monitor this because uh, sometimes Microsoft Flight Simulator can trigger a direct to the airport. Hasn't happened for me yet in the CRJ itself, but certainly something to watch for. And you can see their course of 049 heading to Delta Hotel 633, which is good, that's what we want. You can see it there in the PFD as well. And turning. Remember to recenter the heading bug. And we'll descend down to 6000. And we could just leave it on nav mode and uh, continue all the way. But let's say, for example, we've just been given some vectors by ATC. So uh, Osprey 165, descend 4,000 feet. And turn he right heading uh, 150. So vertical speed. Heading mode, that's where recentering the bug is good for us. And we can turn right. We want to bring the speed down to about 180. And what we can do now is we can go on to lock mode. And course of 227, we want to check the charts. And actually, the charts say 228. So we need to flick the course across one so that it reads the correct figure. And then uh, we'd be established or we'd be told that we um, are cleared to establish on the ILS for runway 23. So we're in heading mode, and what we can now do is arm approach mode, and that should now start to get the aeroplane to line up with the ILS. Lock 1 is flashing because it's just armed, while the aeroplane is uh, getting itself aligned for the approach, uh, for the glide slope. And we're level at 4000. Added some flaps in, so naturally we climb ever so slightly, but uh, the nose will eventually come down to match. But we're doing 180 knots, so we need some flaps. Uh, interestingly as well, this is add-on scenery, but uh, it's given us a, a lock of 96 miles, which we know is not correct. Now we go to flaps 20, we've got approach mode on, and we can see the aeroplane starting to descend. It's actually ever so slightly below the glide slope, but we just monitor it to see if it rectifies itself. If not, we just take over. So at this point we can uh, hit VREF set. You can see 128 is set there on the speed bug. And the aeroplane starting to descend, um, albeit a little, uh, little more viciously than we would like. Make sure the thrust reversers are armed and we can start to bring the speed right down.
So, interestingly, we've lost uh, approach mode a little bit, and the localizer wasn't really behaving properly. So I've come off autopilot, and I've just all I've done is recycled. I've gone back onto heading mode, made sure the heading bug's centered properly again, and I've just refreshed everything basically. So I've, I've flown it manually very briefly, and you can see now it's re-established itself on the glide slope. Uh, because I've turned autopilot back on and gone from heading onto approach mode again and now it's captured nicely. So it's a strange bug in the sim but it's not as such a, an issue with the aeroplane it's more the way that the simulator handles the aircraft. Um, we're doing 160 knots And interestingly, we don't have a DME because it says 95 miles, which we know is not correct. But we're about um, 5 miles now, coming up to 2,000 feet so we can go gear down. and we go full flaps and we can start focusing on bringing that speed back to our target of 128 knots plus 3 so 133 which is about there again there's no auto throttle here so we're having to control the throttle ourselves It's holding 133 knots or so quite nicely there for us. Uh, we're about 4.1 miles away now, so according to the charts, we should be about 1,400 feet. 1,340 to be precise, and we passed it at exactly that. We can see that the uh, we're ever so slightly below the glide slope, but that's not an issue for us. But we're losing our speed a little bit, so let's uh, go ahead and increase the throttle ever so slightly. And you can see that green line there is in line, showing us that we're established on the ILS quite nicely. And that's pretty much it. We just fly in from about a thousand feet. When you take it off autopilot, what you want to make sure is um, that you trim the aeroplane. If you're making little adjustments, uh, for me on my throttle, for example, I've got a um, I've got a trim tab uh, on my joystick. So when I make little adjustments, instead of me keeping forward pressure or back pressure on the stick, I actually use the trim to help me, so I can pretty much neutralise the stick and have it fly the profile that I want. Of course you want two red, two white, uh, but I'm talking at the same time, so I'm not doing this particularly smoothly, I've got to say. Managing the throttle. You want to idle at around about 20. 15, 40, 30, 20, 10. And add in a bit of reverse thrust. 
and just letting the nose gently come down. Don't want to slam it down. There we go, that's the nose down. And braking accordingly. You can actually come off here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. A couple of bugs, uh, more so uh, from the actual simulator as opposed to the aeroplane. Uh, just remember that you need to make sure your course needle is set as per the chart show you rather than what the aeroplane's automatically generated. So in this instance it automatically tuned with a course of 227 when actually we wanted uh, a course of 228 so I've gone ahead and added the one using the course knob. Make sure you've reset your heading bug so that it's in line with the localizer and of course if you do get the weird little bug where the nose starts to pitch down and it loses the glide slope then what I would recommend is just turning the autopilot off leveling it so flying straight and level for a little brief period of time uh, so this is always good if you're intercepting the localizer from below because it buys you that little bit of extra time sometimes um, if the nose gets down too much then uh, of course deactivate the autopilot go back onto heading mode which is where the uh, sinking of the heading bug comes in really handy so re-enable heading mode and then turn the autopilot back on again once you're nice and level and then when you're able to at that point click approach mode again and that seems to wake it up for me anyway so uh, we went from a ever so slightly uh, unstable initial capture of the glide slope um, to a smooth ILS approach all the way in and of course on the way into the stand as well we can go APU on it's in bytes that's gone it's now SFV open and ignition start and lights as required of course too and we'll taxi on into stand at uh, Hamburg naturally nobody's coming but uh, we would probably be told to hold short here by ATC and then we'd be cleared to cross so strobes on for crossing a uh, active runway at Hamburg for example it's very common for them to use one direction for departures so we landed on 2-3 um, it's common for them to do that uh, but then also similarly use the runway we've just crossed for departures only uh, so we have one for landing one for takeoff clear of that so let's turn those off and we'll go and pick a stand we can see the APU is almost at uh, 100% we're pretty much just taxiing on idle and it's rolling in quite nicely now don't forget of course to bring all your flap settings back to zero and close your spoilers and if you want you can just go onto the checklist tab of course and follow the after landing checklist um, so like turning your transponder off and things like that although do note if you do turn a transponder off depending on where you're flying on VATSIM sometimes there's a requirement depending on the country for you to keep your transponder on at all times so of course that would be uh, that would come into effect instead. Interestingly, the sim wants us to park right here actually, so uh, we can turn our wing inspection lights off and our taxi lights, and we can go ahead and taxi onto stand. go brakes on and for shut off all we need to do really with the APU available of course is we could just hit right engine stop open the valve there open the lock and bring the throttle into shut off left engine stop open the lock 
and back down into shut off. And you can see the shut off position there. And of course you get all your master caution and warnings. And we can make sure of course the beacon light is off too. We can do the passenger door. And there you have it, uh, in the best way it possibly can, with bugs of course affecting the sim. Um, that's how you guys fly the ILS approach in the really amazing Aerosoft CRJ. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to click that subscribe button too and check out our live stream schedule. And I hope to see you very soon in a live chat in the very near future. Thanks for watching.